Hey everyone, welcome back to Pause and Talk television show. Um, today, I'm quite excited to be here um, because we have two phenomenal ladies with us. And uh, this is Linda and then this is Kelly and they are with the Kelly Mental Health Foundation. Uh, so we're very excited to bring them onto the television show just to talk to you guys a little bit about um, some services available in Thunder Bay and um, what's kind of going on with them. So welcome guys. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule. I obviously know how, um, how busy life can get, so we really do appreciate you guys coming on the show today. Um, so, Kelly Mental Health Foundation. Start us off, let's talk a little bit about it. Kelly Mental Health Foundation uh, was started last year and it's basically been created so that we can uh, provide services here in Thunder Bay, uh, raise funds for things that help people with mental health issues. Um, one of our biggest initiatives to date has been the Kelly Magazine. Mm -hmm. So Kelly Magazine is uh, a compilation of all of our therapists writing, all of our blog posts, all of our articles. Um, and what we have done so far is we've been able to give it out to the public and it's been just, we've had such a great response to it. And then the other part of it is uh, putting on workshops and seminars for the public with the intent of getting rid of the stigma against mental health and educating people to create a better community. Mm -hmm. I think that's really important, right? Um, even for myself, um, I'm actually, my background is social work and I think there has been so many stigmas towards mental health and I think what you ladies are doing is so important and I think a lot of people don't really know what are available or what's available in Thunder Bay. So I think this is kind of a really cool scenario and um, in, uh, t in today's conversation as well we're going to be tying it into uh, pet therapy and we're going to really kind of divulge into that. Um, so the magazine. I have it. I love it. I <laughs> completely talk about this magazine to every single person that I honestly talk to. I show them when they come to my house. I'm pretty weird about your magazine. Um, <laughs> there's just so much detailing and everything into this. And obviously, um, you know, it's a small fee. It's $12, $12 a year for, for the yearly uh, subscription. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, it's, it's affordable. And there's so much details that go into this magazine. And I think that's really important that also a lot of people don't really know. Um, and so what kind of started you off with that? Like what brought, gave you the idea of bringing a magazine and creating a magazine? Because I believe it's the first kind of mental health magazine that Thunder Bay really has right it now, is. right? Yeah, mm -hmm. Thunder Bay's first mental health magazine. And uh, I mean, I have more of a background as a writer myself. So then when, when we were doing our blog posts and our articles, that was always part of uh, the initiative. It was not just let's do therapy. Mm -hmm. It was let's talk about what it's like to be a therapist. Let's talk about what it's like to see people on a human level and then just you know, create that information for people so that they understand it. And then Piper, uh, who has had an astronomical rise within <laughs> the company and is now our board member as, yeah. uh, found, as part of the foundation, she decided to create a magazine. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. I think, honestly, anyone who doesn't know anything about uh, the magazine, you guys need to go on to the Kelly Mental Health uh, website um, and you guys need to look more into this because it is phenomenal. Like I said, the detail is crazy. Um, so, obviously, we discussed a few, um, you know, different kind of situations that led into the foundation. Um, what about the need? Like, what, what kind of... Describe the need of... Um, basically for mental health in like, services in Thunder Bay? There is a huge need, and a lot of the public services right now are facing a two-year wait list. Wow, and that is crazy. Exactly, so with Kelly Mental Health, the clinic, we have tried to help you know, people who can afford it privately, but with the foundation, because it's a nonprofit, we may have the opportunity to uh, look for grants, look for funding, try to raise money mm -hmm. to help people, because there's such a need that you know people come to us and they go, well, where can I go if I can't? If I can't get in here, I can't mm -hmm. get in here. Mental health is not something that can wait. Yeah, not exactly. for two years. No kidding. And I think that is is really scary. Like that time frame. Um, even for myself, like I wouldn't be able to. I really enjoy like, it, it, and I'm comfortable talking about it. Going to counseling, and that's one of the main things that I really do focus on. And I think it's so important. So the fact that you guys are working on that and really pushing through for that in the future, um, I think it's just it's a beautiful thing, and it's a really it's a great conversation starter. And I think that that's why we all kind of came together today too, right? Just to talk about it. Um, what are some of your goals for the foundation? Um, 
Um, I know I read on the uh, website and everything like that that there you guys have like a few kind of um, goals for the for the future of it. So what are your guys' personal goals for it? You want the big lofty goals, the huge ones, or just the uh... <laughs> whatever you want, <laughs> whatever huge... you want our community to know. I I want the foundation to help work towards creating a center of excellence for the treatment of mental health. That. And that also includes uh, a portion for research, a por portion for clinical care, and a portion for education, mm -hmm. um, which is part of what we're doing now with just our literature and what we're putting out to the community is that education. Absolutely. And what about you? Like, what do you think? Like, what are, what are your, like, some of your personal goals for it? What do you want to see in the future of it? Well, like Linda, I love writing. Mm -hmm. It was always a passion of mine and being a therapist. You get to write case notes, but it's not quite the same. Yeah, exactly. So being able to write articles about things you're passionate about, about your experience, about education, you're mm -hmm. able to reach out to people who may not be able to afford counseling, mm -hmm. who may be really suffering and need something, some education to help them along yeah. the way before they can get that more formal help. Yeah, I think I think obviously we can all agree like education is key when it comes uh, to this. So uh, when we come back, we're going to discuss and go really into depth about uh, pet therapy and uh, your guys' article that you guys posted. And so we're gonna talk a little bit more about that um, on our, uh, like when we come back. Thanks for uh, joining us again. So again, we're here with Kelly Mental Health Foundation and we're quite excited to be here today. Um, so now, pet therapy. That's kind of why we're all here, right? Um, so I'm going to address it right to you. Yep. So you have obviously your background um, and pet therapy obviously means a lot to all of us. Um, but I wanted to discuss, you guys posted an article in 2018 and it was surrounding pet therapy. And so I wanted to talk to you about that and how that kind of took place. And so tell me about it. Animals have always been the main love of my life, especially dogs. Mm -hmm. um, so of course, going into social work, finding out you know pet therapy existed, I wanted to do everything I could with that. Um, even when I did my master's, my main thesis was on how dog sledding could help women who have been sexually assaulted. Wow. So when I was able to come to the working here with the foundation, mm -hmm. learning that I could write articles about things that I love, such as pet therapy, and get that information out to people is great. Yeah. Because a lot of people know, oh, yeah, you know, animals can help. They make you feel good. But they don't quite know the science behind it and mm -hmm. just how much of an impact that animals can have on your mental health. Yeah. And I think that's something that obviously is really, really important for us to be here today just to kind of discuss about that. So obviously um, in the article, you broke down three types of animal services. Um, so it was therapy, um, it was, sorry, it was services, it was therapy and emotional. Um, so can you kind of talk to me about the difference between them? Because we mm. all kind of like, we obviously we just discussed that a lot of people don't really understand that there are different types of, yes. you know, pet therapy services. So do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so service dogs are more the dogs that you're used to. So they have lots of training. They're placed with their owners for their whole lives. So if you're blind and you need a seeing eye dog, if you have PTSD and you need a dog, mm -hmm. um, even dogs that can detect seizures, those are service dogs that are paired with you their whole life. They go through extensive training. They go through training with their owners, and they have them for the whole time that they need them. Mm -hmm. Therapy dogs, they're trained, but not quite as intensely, and they're used for more shorter term sessions. So um, St. John's therapy dogs, you know, if the LU students are feeling all stressed out, they'll bring them in there and help them relax, and even going into nursing homes, doing things like that. So just little short visits with animals to help people improve their mental health. Mm -hmm. And then emotional pets don't quite have the same amount of training um, or even no training, but they do have a strong connection with their owner. 
So a lot of people you'll see have emotional support animals for anxiety or for depression that they'll bring somewhere. You know, you, you'll even hear of emotional support peacocks yeah. that are <laughs> going around. So it's, it's crazy how, how many and I guess how, how much animals can play such a huge role in your lives. Um, even for myself, I have anxiety. I had depression. I think, I think some people get confused too with, with depression, right? They, yes. they think that it, you know, when you're sad, it just, that's it. And it just go, and then when you're happy, it goes away, but it's a, it's a constant battle. And I think so even for myself with having still have, you know, suffering from depression, um, my cats play a huge role in my life and it is crazy like to see, you know, even when I'm having a bad day and like they come, like they literally are drawn to me. And I think it's just, it's, it's fascinating to me. So, and I truly believe that there are tons of like, like the science behind it is, is just phenomenal. Um, so basically, um, obviously you've done extensive research on this. Yes. And so you obviously, you mentioned that you have a dog yourself. Absolutely. I yeah. Have a, a beagle. He's 11, going to be 12. So That's he awesome. has helped me through my whole life. Ever since I could talk, I wanted a dog. Yeah. Um, so then he's my first one that I have. Mm -hmm. And he's helped me with my anxiety, my depression. Um, after I was sexually assaulted and got PTSD, he helped me most along that healing journey. You know, nights when I couldn't sleep, just listening to him snore and dream away. Yeah. <laughs> it really helped me in helping just have him help me feel safe. Yeah. Having that unconditional love and yeah. support from somebody really I, helped. I, you know, and thank you so much for sharing that. Because again, like we're here today to really just talk about this and open up about that. So I really, really do appreciate you, you, you know, talking and saying your story because a lot of people, um, you know, even for myself, we have hard times, you know, kind of discussing certain sensitive, you know, conversations and everything. So mm -hmm. I think that's, uh, that's really strong of you. And it's very important to, you know, open that conversation, how we kind of talked earlier about how there's so much stigmas kind of surrounding the, the mental health um, scenario, right? The opposite. Uh, I mean, they talk about depression as being a disconnection, mm -hmm. and when animals are around, you feel connected. Yes. Yeah, and that's that's where really where it hits home for me. Yeah. yeah, and they give you a sense of purpose. Yes, you know, especially when you're struggling with depression and yeah. why should I get out of bed today? Well, you have to. I have to feed my animal. I have yeah. to take care yeah. of them. Yeah, yeah. it no forces you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that's a really really neat way to tie like to kind of tie that all together. Saying that mm -hmm. like like that specifically, just because. It is like I think that even for myself, there was times that I was, you know, trying to find a sense of purpose. And you're exactly right. That's what would get me out of bed. My cats, I had to feed them. I had to take care of them and, you know, do the fun duties of scooping their poop, you know. So I think uh, Accomplishment. it is, it is because you get out of bed. Right. And yeah. so you're fighting another day. And I think that that's really important. Um, you know, even from myself and, and, and my background, obviously, like what like the research that I've done when it comes to pet therapy, I've um, read obvious uh, obviously that uh, there is releasing chemicals like serotonin and dopamine and everything like that so can you guys discuss that a little bit and um, you know what kind of goes on with like behind like the science of it so when you're interacting with an animal that you like obviously <laughs> um, oxytocin is released so that really helps build love build trust and cooperation it helps to reduce anxiety, reduced depression and loneliness. They've actually done so many studies where it helps even people's physical health, where it helps lower their blood pressure and it helps all around. <laughs> yeah, all around, eh? Yeah. That's so, I, I find it very fascinating that, you know, they have so much importance and it, it can be such a life-changing, altering thing, you know what I mean? So um, I just, yeah, I think that's wonderful. Is there anything else that you guys can or, or want to talk about when it comes to pet therapy? Can you talk to me a little bit about, do you know of any services specifically or maybe some hopes that you guys have with the foundation and what you guys kind of want to um, see in the future of pet therapy for Thunder Bay? We want a farm. <laughs> <laughs> Just the farm filled with animals, eh? Yes. That's the dream. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a smaller scale, would there be anything else that you can kind of think of on like a day-to-day, -day? like even, you know, maybe an office animal or something like that, like some, some like if, say if I, I wanted to come in and spend some time with some animals, would you guys be, are you guys, you know, potentially willing to have a little section for that or what's, like, what's your kind of thoughts when it comes to pet therapy? I think, well, I mean, with having an office animal, we'd all love it. But of course, yeah. that animal's well-being would be front and center. Yes. So 
obviously someone would have to take it home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Uh, so when we come back, um, we are going to be sitting down with Kitty Care to discuss a little bit more in depth about pet therapy. Thank you ladies so much for being here. We really appreciate it. Thanks for joining us again at Pause and Talk. Um, where I'm obviously very excited again to be here with two lovely ladies. Uh, I'm sure you guys recognize them. This is Cindy and Carol from Kitty Care Feline Rescue Group. Uh, so welcome ladies and thank thanks you. for being on our second episode of Pause and Talk. Um, so for some people in our community that don't really know about Kitty Care, um, do you want to discuss a little bit about, uh, about the rescue? Sure. Kitty Care, we began in 2010. Uh, we began because Carol and I were volunteering at Animal Services and we became quite upset with the number that were having to be euthanized. And so we thought, well, we could start a foster program. And from there it's evolved to the point today where we're very busy. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, yes, you guys are uh, quite busy. Um, so how many foster homes do you guys like, approximately have right now? Um, I'm not really sure. Well, I would say on record about 30. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have that many right now that are currently fostering cats because we're really delighted to say there aren't that many that we have in, in foster care. That's really care. good. Mm -hmm. That's uh, obviously a huge accomplishment. For sure. Um, so, I basic, so for people that don't know as well, you guys don't take in, because I'm sure you guys get questions all the time, mm -hmm. obviously with being in Thunder Bay, our homeless uh, feline population is quite high. So I can already, I know that you guys get this phone call all the time asking if you guys will take in cats. Mm -hmm. And so do you want to address that a little bit today? Mm -hmm. Well, we don't take any sur owner surrenders. We only remove cats from animal services that would be euthanized mm -hmm. and uh, that they um, give us a call about mm -hmm. and if we have foster homes. And in fact, we haven't really received as many calls about uh, owner surrenders. I think people are aware of the fact that that's not how we operate. Oh, so good. I'd say recently that's... Uh, been a, uh, a fact. So. Yeah, so it's kind of changing and yeah. evolving. So mm -hmm. obviously the education of that is getting out there to people. So that's yes. obviously a huge win. Um, I just read in your newsletter, because I'm obviously obsessed with the Kitty Care newsletter, if you guys don't know about it, you guys need to go onto their website at www.kittycare2010.org. You guys can sign up for their newsletter. It's very beneficial because you guys can find out what's going on in the community, future events, uh, you know, future uh, or current adoption uh, stories, happy stories. So there's tons of stuff. Trust me, it's my every like Sunday morning <laughs> ritual um, so but the good thing I read about it and I think it was the June newsletter um, in April there was no euthanizations you guys I guess partnered with uh, the vet from the Thunder Bay and District Humane Society um, animal services it was kind of a conjunction from what I read and so officially in April of this year there was absolutely zero euthanizations from animal services yes. correct mm -hmm. yes that is that's crazy. thrilling that is, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. From, you know, you think about it, 2010, where you, where you ladies were when you first started this. There were 1,200 euthanized. That yes. is. And now we're down to hundreds. Mm. Uh, yeah, and yeah. months that have none. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know what, obviously, like on behalf of myself, everyone here, I, I can comfortably say this, that uh, Shaw Spotlight um, and our community, thank you all for what you guys do for our feline population and uh because you guys really are. It, it, we do really appreciate it, and it's uh, definitely Thank a... You. But it's not just us. You know, it's social media. It gets yeah. a message out there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. People are becoming more aware of micro, the need for microchipping. Yes. They become more aware of the role of animal services, mm -hmm. that when they lose their pet, they need to go there. Yes. They need to report, and they need to look for their cat. Because what also what we've noticed is that the number of people going to animal services to locate their cat has also increased mm -hmm. and their adoptions have also increased at animal services mm -hmm. so the more they adopt out the more uh, they can keep yeah like the like the more space mm -hmm. um so obviously we've been talking a little bit about uh euthanization so um 
and I know it's a touchy subject for I feel like, a, like some people and even for myself, obviously, it's, it's, it's you know, a, a sad scenario, but um, we discussed how um, animal services um, and your partnership and how you, you know, remove those, um, I feel like potential, um, sorry, potential, uh, uh, wow, words, we'll cut that out, um, potential euthanization uh, felines. What are some of the, um, I guess, what are some things that animal services looks at? Like how, how do they really get to the point where they pick and choose those at like felines? Mm -hmm. I think if it's a case where the animal is really um, not adjusting well to human contact okay. and termed cautionary, but even in those cases, we look at that cat's ability to be a barn cat mm -hmm. or a cat that is... Um, a, like a type of a service cat and uh, and we will rescue in those cases as well if we have people who are interested in absolutely in homing a cat in that way mm -hmm. right they don't take delight in no. euthanizing the animals it, of course it not. takes a great toll yeah. on the animal control attendants and animal control officers that yeah. have to take them to mm -hmm. be euthanized absolutely so they do what they can to try to save as many as they can and as Carol mentioned there's some that will not adjust. Um, and then they also, we also remove cats that don't do well in a kennel environment like pregnant mums yes. and mums with babies because we know they're at risk there. Yeah, for, I mean, there's obviously diseases and yeah. infections mm -hmm. and stuff like that, right? So, right. yeah, and it's less stress, like removing right. those like from, from that scenario, right? So And some come in injured and really sick mm -hmm. and they send them away for a vet assessment and the city will only pay so much for vet care. And in many cases, they will, the animal control people will contact mm -hmm. us and say, could you, here's a cat that needs some care. Would you be willing to take it on? And we always say yes. Mm -hmm. We always say yes. Yeah, I haven't heard of a scenario like recently anyways for, for no. like that you ladies have said no to. And I just know how big and full your hearts are. So, And animal care attendants say that most of the cats coming in are not feral. Mm -hmm. They are people's pets, Yeah, uh, stray cats, uh, you know, that population. Um, of wild cats are is not is not happening yeah as much. which is obviously really good right yeah um, so obviously you know you guys um, do a lot of um, you know events and things like that in the community so do you want to talk a little bit about what separates you guys um, and just obviously from the newsletter I, I know a lot of what you what you ladies do um, but I read in the June uh, newsletter that specifically you guys went to a senior citizen home so obviously that um, it's not the first time that you've done this. You guys have done this for quite some time now. Um, and want to talk about a little bit more about um, why you guys go into these homes. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things I think that has changed since we began in 2010 is the whole idea that we wanted to educate the public about um, animals and uh, animal welfare and the importance of spaying and neutering and cat care and... Uh, so we do look at providing information about the role of animal services, the role of rescues, the role of the Humane Society, and um, the role of the groomer, the vet, mm -hmm. the, the food that you feed your cats, uh, the community in terms of, of cat therapy and uh, cat wellness and human health wellness as Absolutely. well. So um, uh, I think that's evolved as yeah. we've evolved and as... as People have become aware of um, uh, the importance of animals and their sentient beings and, mm -hmm. and so on. So, so it's been a real pet, change. Yeah, exactly. It's really evolved, like, as you said. So obviously pet therapy is really important to you ladies. And I think um, it obviously shows in everything that you guys do. So um, do you want to kind of talk to me a little bit about the importance of pet therapy? And, and um, yeah. Well, we know from the research that pets have a a huge influence on people's mental health and physical health. Mm -hmm. uh, Northwest Ontario, Thunder Bay has the highest incidence of cardiovascular disease. And we know that pets play a role in helping people make feel better uh, psychologically and physically. Uh, we know that people who own cats, their blood pressure lowers. Uh, cats have a certain, their purr has an effect mm -hmm. on healing. We know that there's research now that talks about the frequency of the purr and how it can um, speed up healing of fractures. 
So pets play a huge role in uh, our physical and mental well-being. Uh, people don't suffer as much depression or have, take as many prescription drugs. We know all that through research. Mm -hmm. We see it when we take the cats to an old folks home, yeah, uh, seniors home. Carol and I started that in 2009 when we took animal services cats to a retirement home. Oh, wow. um, and so that's evolved, as Carol has mentioned, to today, where we see these the faces light up in the residence. It, it, they, yeah. it brings back memories. People who don't talk, all of a sudden when they have a kitten on their lap, it brings back all these memories and they start talking about their little kitten they had in the past. Mm -hmm. And the staff mm -hmm. are, ju are just remark just blown away yeah. by their reaction. Absolutely. And some don't are stoic and don't say anything, but you could see as they pat their cat yeah. that they're, that sensory um, attraction mm -hmm. and the feeling of well-being that they get from the animal yeah. and mm -hmm. just the distraction to their day. Absolutely. You know, it's a lonely <coughs> existence for many of them. Yeah, and that yeah. happy greeter that yes. greets you at yeah. the door when you yeah. come home. So it's yeah. very rewarding and we, we like to do it. Good. So when we come back, we are going to be showing you all some gorgeous felines through Kitty Care Feline Rescue Group that are available for adoption and looking for their forever homes.